Hello everyone and welcome to our first episode of Supplement Science. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, today's episode will be about creatine and the benefits of taking it and whether or not it's worth taking. Um, in the fitness industry, there's a lot of controversy on whether creatine and its benefits outweigh the possible negative side effects of its supplementation. Creatine is the most well-researched sports supplement with hundreds of science-back studies. There are two types of creatine that are not as well-researched and less science-back that hold a lot of the false marketing and unfounded information found on creatine. These two forms of creatine, neither of which are creatine monohydrate, are creatine HCL and creatine ethyl ester. These also simply have not been researched or studied nearly as much as creatine monohydrate. Creatine monohydrate in supplements is usually manufactured from sarcosine and cyanamide, not to be confused with the poison cyanide. Um, sarcosine is an amino acid similar to salt, and cyanamide can be used as a defoliant or fertilizer in many cases. These, along with other catalyst compounds, are combined in a reactor, heated and pressurized, to form creatine crystals. A study in 2009 was published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, um, where 14 untrained male participants were randomly selected and separated into two groups, one given creatine and the other was given only a carbohydrate supplement. Both groups consumed their supplements for both 5 days prior to and 14 days following a resistance exercise session. Um, muscle strength was examined by voluntary isokinetic knee extensions using a Cybex denomometer. The results were that the creatine supplement group saw 10% higher isokinetic and 21% higher isometric knee extension strength during recovery from exercise-induced muscle damage. The conclusion of this investigation was a significant improvement in the rate of recovery of knee extensor muscle function after creatine supplementation following injury. Is creatine monohydrate worth taking? Not necessarily, but many of us do not get enough creatine on a daily basis from foods such as steak, milk, or tuna. Um, it's recommended that creatine supplementation should be limited at 1.4 grams per pound of body weight for the average adult. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.